Good afternoon. This is Judge Middleton. We're bringing all the parties into the proceeding. Uh, I've got Moto E. Who am I speaking with? Hey, I know a Judy Beers. All right. Are you a witness in this case? Yes, sir. I'm all right. I'm going to put, put you in the waiting room. Thank you for being here. Trish, we'll find out who this is. <clears throat> Good afternoon. This is Judge Middleton. I'm speaking with Trish. Who am I speaking with? I am Trish. Trish, what's your last name? Brown, Patricia Brown. I'm the okay. owner of the management company that Josie works for. All right. I'm giving you a name. Do you have, have the ability to do video? I'm not sure why it's not uh, start video. There you, there you go. go. I've also got Josie Moreno. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? Yes. This is Judge Middleton. Are you here as a witness in this case? I am the manager for. Uh, okay. All right. Project. Very good. Uh, We've got the defendant here. Good afternoon. This is Judge Middleton. Ashley, can you hear me? Yes, sir. You're labeled as Ashley Myers. Would you like prefer that or Ashley Agua? Um, Myers is okay. Either way, really. All right, we'll leave it as that. Uh, it is 159. Uh, we're waiting for your attorney to log in. Yes. <clears throat> Mr. Thorne, can you hear me? I can. Thank you. <clears throat> I would tell everybody, as long as we're here, that we are live on YouTube and we are on the Zoom platform and things are being recorded. Uh, we're waiting for Meg Bauer from Legal Aid to appear. Uh, we got an appearance yesterday. I sent some correspondence out. 
by email to the attorneys to see if there was going to be any request to adjourn this, and there was none. So I'm missing my neighbor's funeral at 2 o'clock. Sorry to hear that. Yes, sorry. She was 96 and she led a very full life, but um, I lived a couple doors away from her for 45 years. At any rate, this was previously set and you were all waiting for your day in court, so I chose not to adjourn it. Mr. Thornton, did you have any contact from Ms. Bauer other than the pleadings that were filed? Uh, Your Honor, the only thing I've gotten was the emails that the court forwarded. I didn't uh, get the appearance or the, an appearance wasn't attached to those that I could find. Well, it came in later. Uh, <clears throat> late yesterday, but there is an appearance. Here she is. Judy Beers is one of your witnesses, Mr. Thornton? Uh, yes. All right. I'll bring her in briefly and uh, tell her what's going on. All right, Ms. Bauer is here with us now. We can begin. Uh, this is JRD Companies, LLC, Vista Point versus Jonathan Mahler and Ashley Agua, who is also known as Ashley Myers. We'll refer to her today, refer to her as Ashley Myers. Uh, Mr. Lance Thornton is here on behalf of the company. The owner of the management company, Patricia Brown, is present. Josie Moreno, the manager, is present. Uh, Judy Beers, who will be a potential witness, is also present. Ms. Beers. Thank you for waiting. I'm going to put you back in the waiting room. We'll be with you in a little bit. Uh, the defendant, Ashley, is here. She's represented by Meg Bauer of Legal Aid, who uh, we learned yesterday was going to be appearing on the defendant's behalf. I believe we learned that Jonathan Mahler has already vacated these premises. He is not here. I guess we'll hear more about that. Uh, Ms. Myers, uh, we went through your rights as a tenant in the landlord for tenant proceeding in the last hearing. One of those things I advised you was you had a right to contact legal aid or other counsel, and you did do that, and legal aid has agreed to take your case. This case is a termination of tenancy case. Your landlord wants you to move out. Uh, they have with the court, which include multiple police reports and some photographs. They allege that you're violating your lease in multiple ways. Lists, unauthorized personnel living in the apartment. That's a one bedroom apartment. Additional tenants without prior approval violates the lease. Defendants are keeping pets in the apartment without approval, violates the lease. Receive numerous complaints from other tenants in the complex regarding yelling, screaming, foul language, domestic disturbances coming from your apartment. Next, police have been called to defend this apartment on numerous times for disturbing the peace violations, assaults, family disputes, etc. That violates the crime-free addendum to the lease. Next, the defendants have refused to Next, the apartment is being kept in an unsanitary condition in violation of paragraph 14 of the lease. Next, other tenants in the complex have made multiple complaints to the managers of Vista Point regarding defendants' children or children in their care, being left alone outside in the parking lot, in the car, and in the hallways. 
Also, no multiple complaints have been received regarding defendants allowing children to climb on and jump from the balcony of the apartment. Those are the allegations that they requested to terminate your tenancy. Uh, we had the initial hearing last week. The plaintiff is in some urgency to have you move. So the matter was set for trial today. Uh, I got some late communication with Ms. Bauer. I forwarded that to Mr. Thornton, requested if there was going to be any request for adjournment so I could go to my neighbor's funeral. And there was none, so we're here. This is the time and date set for a bench trial on this matter. Mr. Thornton has procured, I guess, several witnesses who are prepared to testify. Good afternoon, Ms. Bauer. Uh, is anything you wish to say before we start? Good afternoon, Your Honor. Uh, first, I uh, I guess I am sorry that my, I did not request an adjournment such that you could go to your neighbor's funeral, but most importantly, I am sorry that you've lost someone close to you. Um, second, uh, would Your Honor consider um, having the, the tenant and the property manager and Mr. Thornton and I speak in a breakout room for a few minutes, um, or is that... Uh, I don't have an objection to that. I was hopeful that perhaps you and Mr. Thornton would talk a minute after trial time, uh, but I will put you on Brown. We'll go on to that. Ms. Myers, I'm going to put you in the waiting room. Okay. So be on camera. Uh, I'll be here staring off into space while you guys talk. Uh, Your Honor, were you putting the... Uh, um, and Ms. Myers, uh, if you need her in there, come out of the room and I'll bring her in. Okay. I can see how this is going to go. This is going to take an hour. You're going to talk great. If it doesn't, we've squandered an hour. But go ahead and go into the uh, breakout. And yeah, I appreciate it, Your Honor. And is it, if it's possible for you to go to your, your funeral, I mean, like, we can... No, it's... You just do what you need to do. Uh, this was previous due. I'm here. It's what I get paid for. Thank you, Your Honor. I've done a lot of this today. Sitting around waiting. Howard used to call me and say that. What? Says, Howard used to call me and say, I'm here at court in the hurry up and wait mode. <laughs> when I was a young prosecutor, I'd sit there uh, to take criminal matters waiting, waiting, but it's been many years ago. Now everybody waits in the virtual world. Mm -hmm. memo uh, email about scheduling that hearing yes
What is her other name besides Myers? Agua, O-G-W-A. I'm not sure what kind of name that is, but... Um, Where I used to work, I'd go back in my office. They would go meet in a conference chair waiting. You can't knock on your door anymore. <laughs> I guess I could bring in Monday's files and work on those.
Your Honor, if you're within earshot, we are ready to come back. But it looks like we're, you guys figured it out, so. Thank you. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, what do we need to do now? Ms. Bauer, do you need to talk to your client? No, sir. We're going to we're gonna move forward. Ms. Myers, welcome back. Uh, the parties did have an opportunity to consult and uh, no resolution was reached, so we're going to proceed with the trial on the merits. And Mr. Thornton, do you wish to make any opening remarks or simply start in with your proofs? Oh, we can simply start in with the proofs, Your Honor. All right, I sort of laid out what the allegations were in your attachment. Uh, is that sufficient? It is. All right, who's your first witness? Your, your Honor, can I make an opening statement? Uh, yes, I guess uh, sure. I didn't. I mean, Normally, you're right, you make it now or at the time of start your proofs. But yes, Ms. Bowers, anything you want to say? Uh, yeah, I just uh, want to say that this is a, a case about, um, that maybe this is a landlord-tenant case, but really this is a case about an overwhelmed single mother uh, who has not been supported. Uh, trying her best to raise her children and and is being subject to the scrutiny of others in her process and manner of being a parent and um, that uh, that she is a tenant not all that different from tenants in and at this the point um, but because of her because she's an easy target um, she's a, a bit of a scapegoat for some of the other issues that are happening at the property and uh, that that really this is a case about a, a single mom trying to raise her kids the best she can in some unideal circumstances, not about flagrant violations of uh, of a lease. So thank you. All right. All right. Thank you. We'll find out, Ms. Myers. And again, I want to remind you all: this is broadcast on YouTube, and there are people uh, watching. Uh, there are people watching, which is how court is done in the public. All right, Mr. Thornton, who do you wish to call first? Your Honor, if, if uh, we can, I would like to take our witnesses, our third party witnesses first, so we get their testimony before we would have any kind of uh, problem with communications and lose them. So. All right, so you'd like me to bring Judy Beers in? Yeah, and it's my understanding that Mr. Beers, uh, who is with her, may also testify. All right. Uh, are they going to testify independently, like separately? Well, They're not both going to be on the stand at the same time, right? No. Um, good afternoon. Are you Judy Beers? Yes, sir. We've met before. I'm Judge Middleton. I'm over here in Centerville. Who is there with you? My husband, Daniel. He was asked right. to appear also. All right. Could Daniel, could Daniel wait in another room while you were testifying? Go on. You got to go in a different room. You need your walker? Okay. All right. Miss Beers? Shut the door, please. Yes. All right. Could you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter? Be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. All right. Now you're under oath. Mr. Thornton, who represents the apartment complex, has some questions for you. And then Ms. Bauer, who represents uh, Ms. Myers, also has questions for you. Mr. That's Thornton? Fine. Yes, Ms. Beers, uh, Lance Thornton. Uh, I represent the apartment complex. All right. What is your address, Ms. Beers? 
1015 Cato Lane, apartment A is an apple four. And you know the defendant, uh, Ashley Agua, and also goes by Ashley Myers? Yes. You know her from living there at the apartment complex? Yes, we live below her. Okay. You li your apartment is directly below her apartment? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, just one floor down? Yes, sir. There's only two floors in this building. Okay. Uh, have you witnessed any disturbances coming from Ms. Uh, Meyer's apartment? Uh, on a daily basis. Uh, okay. Can you kind of describe with starting with most recent what you've witnessed and uh, and just start with the most recent and then uh, go to the older. Tell us what you know. Well, today we, my husband and I got up at approximately 10.30 a.m. and it sounded like the kids were running from one end to the other, which children will be children. I understand this, but there's some days that'll be reasonably quiet up there. There's other days it sounds like she's throwing things up against the walls or throwing it across the room. And this is on a daily basis. This doesn't happen all the time. Um, about approximately, I'm going to say 10 days ago to two weeks, my I was in the apartment because I brought some stuff in ahead of my husband. He was having medical issues. He's been put on a walker and depends and some other stuff. He come in through the door and he's huffing and puffing like he's trying to catch his breath. He's looking around and all of a sudden she goes off on him like a lunatic. Oh, I come out because I could hear her and I looked up and I go, leave him alone. He has done nothing to you. Well, she, he's staring at me. Did you ever think maybe he's looking around to try to catch his breath? He's having medical issues. You're not helping. She got into a fight with me. I got into a fight with her. Numerous names were called. And I told him, go back outside before she attacks you. More than she's already had, because she was verbally attacking. I went outside. We waited. I called the police, because I didn't feel it was safe for Daniel or I, either one. They came. I was over talking to Josie the uh, uh, office manager here at Cato Lane and David, the maintenance man was there also. And she come out, started screaming and ranting and raving and carrying on. I go to Josie, Josie, will you please deal with that? I'm done. I don't even feel safe in our apartment anymore because of all the crap she's pulling. The police told her to leave us alone, oh, uh, back Honor. off. Your Honor. Yes. Never mind. I would drop. All right. Go ahead, Mr. Thornton. The, the police told us that they told her to stay away from us, leave us alone, don't look at us, don't talk to us, which makes me perfectly happy. But there's a time when she's coming down the steps from her apartment upstairs while we're trying to go out to our car, and I'm waiting for her to go off on us again because it's constantly i don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning we got woke up at three o'clock yesterday morning yesterday from the sound of like things being thrown upstairs then two days we moved in here september 31st two days after we moved in my son-in-law and my youngest grandson who is handicapped i have five handicapped grandchildren between my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. I know what handicapped children are like. I do firsthand. But the second day that we were in here, it sounded literally like somebody was having a physical fight and somebody was being badly slammed up against the floor upstairs. My son-in-law heard it and scared the daylights out of my grandson. 
And I go, that's the first that we've heard anything since we moved in. And that was two days after we had moved in. Since you moved in, uh, Ms. Beers, have you witnessed any other uh, domestic disturbances coming from that apartment or the occupants of that apartment uh, other than what you've described so far? Witness? No. Sounding like there's a, uh, when her and I don't know if it was her boyfriend or her husband, I met him when we were viewing the apartment before we moved in and he was out on the balcony with his son who he said was two. I talked to them, they seemed very nice. I didn't even see her until we were probably in here probably for two weeks. But some days it's fine, no problem. Other days it sounds like they're coming through the floor at. From living below the apartment, do you know how many children live in the apartment? When we first moved in, during the week, I seen three. On the weekends, I seen five. And by what I understand from other people that have talked to me in this building. Stop. That part's hearsay, what other people okay. told you. We're only That's interested fine. in. Yeah, but I've seen three kids during the week and five on the weekend at times. Has that been fairly consistent since you moved in? No. Uh, the five, the three, yes. The five was, I think, maybe every other weekend or every couple of weekends. Okay. Your Honor, if I may say just one thing. Stop, stop. No, you may not. When it's your turn to testify, they'll ask you something, but you're not representing yourself. You've got an attorney, and we'll certainly give you an opportunity to say everything you wish to say, so make a note to yourself to remember it. Uh, anything further from this witness, Mr. Thornton? Ms. Beers, have, have there been any other uh, verbal altercations between you and, and Ms. Myers that other than what you've described? No, not lately, because I've tried to avoid her and I'm sure she's trying to avoid us. Okay. Which is are why we're standing with me. Are you aware of pets there in that apartment? At one time when we were on speaking terms, there was a stray cat outside. She said she was bringing it in at night so it didn't freeze to death which we we don't have a problem with animals we don't and i could understand where she's doing it i would probably do it too if i could that's all, right, all i have here miss bauer has some may have some questions for you also Ms. Bauer. thank you your honor miss beers you testified or you said that you moved in to the apartment on September 31st. Was that of 2020? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And um, at one point in time, you said that there are disturbances on a daily basis. But then uh, at another point in time, you mentioned uh, that it's not all the time. So can you, is, can you tell me which one's accurate? Both. Like right now, I can tell somebody's up there, they're moving the chair around, it sounds like. But I don't think the kids are there because it's all quiet. This okay. morning, this morning, it sounded like the kids were up there, they were running around and it sounded like somebody was either moving furniture or moving boxes around or something. So it was, then it was your impression that there was sound coming. There was there was loud noise coming from upstairs for, yeah. for some reason. Did you actually, okay. Uh, okay. And at one point in time, uh, you mentioned that you, um, that, that, that there were people throwing things upstairs and um, did you, have you ever actually witnessed anybody throw anything upstairs? No. Okay. So you, you don't know. Here the day that I was, that I said, it sounds like they're throwing stuff. And David, well, the maintenance man said yes. 
So that you sounded like somebody was literally Miss Spears, Miss Spears, stop. This is a different type of questioning. This is called cross-examination. When Mr. Thornton asked you questions, it was direct examination. So what I want you to do is just listen to the question and only answer the question that she asks you. Don't just uh, say things off the top of your head. Just try to answer her questions. Thank you. Um, Ms. Ms. Beers, you mentioned that you um, hadn't seen or heard from uh, Ms. Iowa for the first almost two weeks that you lived in the apartment. Is that also accurate? Yeah, I didn't know she was up there. Okay. Um, uh, so you uh, you mentioned that there were, is it is it your testimony that there are five children living in this Agua's apartment? Not now. Okay. Do you know, Kit, um, have you spoken to these children? Yes. When and they are outside playing together. How many of those children are actually Ms. Agua's children, to, uh, as you understand it to be? There's a little boy who would be probably almost three now. There's an older boy that I'm going to say is either eight or 10 years old. And then there's a girl that I'm going to say is maybe 10 or 12. And the other two? The other two I haven't seen for a while, not since shortly after we moved in. They would come up, they'd go out, I didn't talk to them. Um, the other two, I'd say the one was probably about the uh, age of the oldest boy, and the other one looked more like she was 15. Okay. Um, and I have further questions, but Your Honor, there's been, I have not objected to a lot of the hearsay that has had, that has come out. I, um, I guess would like to make a blanket objection to the statements that are presumptive or impressions that that is an understanding that that is the witness's impression, but not the actual truth of the fact necessarily. Well, that certainly goes in anybody's testimony, but yes, she's testifying to what she perceived. All right, thank you, Ms. Spears. Could you ask your husband to come in? Uh, I will. Oh, do you have more questions for her? I did, yeah. Oh, I I'm just, sorry, I thought you were done. Okay. I should. I guess I could have said that at the end. But, uh, thank you, though, Your Honor. Um, so, uh, Ms. Spears, have you, is it your understanding or have you ever witnessed any children? Uh, or, I'm sorry, any friends? Is it possible that the kids have friends? Um, or... You have, you have no, do you have any idea who these other two children might be? I talk to the man more often than I talk to the woman. Okay, so they that's actually a good transition. So I was going to ask you about him. What's yeah. your impression? What's your impression of Mr. Mahler? Well, you I just objected to her giving her impressions and then you asked her for an impression. So uh, uh, you can yeah. answer the question. Uh, what was your impression of the man, Mr. Mahler? He was very nice gentleman. He was polite. He would say hi to us in the halls. We'd talk to him when he was either coming or going from work or the store or wherever it is he was coming from because he always rode a bike. Do you, do you like Mr. Mahler, Ms. Beers? He was a very nice gentleman every time I seen him. He didn't cause any issues with us. We didn't cause any issues with him. Um, okay. Uh, are you aware? Has, has Ms. Myers ever asked you not to speak to her? She's asked us since all this has gone on not to speak to her children, and we haven't. So you haven't spoken to her children at all since... Um, an eviction Probably, proceeding was initiated. I'm going to say since the last Ruha with her doing what she did to Daniel, and I witnessed it, that 
I've not spoke to her children or anything. Her uh, oldest young man opened the door. He was down here one day. He come down the steps. He opened the door and let Daniel and I out. Otherwise, I didn't say thank you or anything because I figured she'd go off. Have the children ever been rude to you? No. Have the children... Um... Okay. Mm. Do you think... You said you didn't know if Mr. Mahler was her boyfriend or her husband. Uh, Correct. Is that, is either, either if he was her boyfriend or her husband, would that be a problem for you? No. Or I should say, if he was her boyfriend, but not her husband, would that be a no. problem for you? Okay. No. Okay. Um, and you moved in in September. 31st. September 31st. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. That's all right. All right. Could you ask Daniel to come in? Yes. You got to hold this. Don't put your fingers on the buttons because you'll disconnect. I'm going in the other room. Hello. Good afternoon, sir. Are you Daniel Beers? Yes, sir. This is Judge Middleton. I'm here at the court in Centerville. Could yep. you please raise your right hand for me, sir? I got it up. All right, you swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give in this matter will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes. All right, I can only see your eyebrows up. If you could tilt the camera down there, that's better. That better? Uh, yes, Mr. Thornton has some questions for you. Mr. Mr. Beers, uh, you live in the apartment below Ms. Myers, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, and it's my understanding from your wife's testimony, you moved in at the end of September of last year, 2020. Is that correct? That's right. Okay. Can you, uh, have there been any disturbances coming from the apartment above you, Ms. Meyer's apartment, uh, since you moved in? Oh, yeah. Can you describe those for us and, and give us a time frame? Well, time, I don't know. But, uh. What she does is she lets the kids run loose anywhere from 5.30 to 6 o'clock in the morning. And they're just stomping the, stomping the heck out of the floor. And once you get up in the morning, you don't want to listen to that. Have there been any disturbances that sounded like uh, fights coming from that apartment? No. Have you, do you have any personal knowledge as to who's living in that apartment with Ms. Myers? Uh, David something. That's a color guy. He's an adult? Yes. Do you have any personal knowledge as to how many children live in that apartment? Uh, three during the week. And five after the week, you know, on Saturday and Sunday. And how, when's the last time you knew that there or saw that there were five children in the apartment? Oh, a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> and what, what do you base, there's three children during the week in the apartment. What do you base that on? Oh. What do I base it on? Yeah, do you see them go up and down and into the apartment? What do, what do you, how do you know there's three children living there? Because two of them, two of them Caucasian and one's a white girl. Little little one is white, and the two other one are colored. You see them with Ms. Myers? Do you? Oh yeah. 
you believe they're her children? I don't know. If they ain't, they babysitting. Have you ever seen, or do you have any knowledge of any animals living in Ms. Meyer's apartment? A cat. Why do you say that? How do you, how do you know there's a cat living in the apartment? Because she went outdoors and got a cat, so it wouldn't freeze. Did you see her do that? No, my wife did. She came in and told me that. That's all I have for Mr. Myers, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Bauer, do you have any questions for this witness? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Thank this you. is attorney Meg Bauer. She represents the defendant, Ms. Myers. She also has a few questions for you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Beers. I appreciate you taking some time to answer my questions. All right. Uh, you mentioned that there was some noise and disturbances. Have you ever told management about the noise and disturbances coming from from uh, that, that have bothered you yeah every every uh all all week long we've been saying something about them you've been and saying something to management for the last week yep and shortly after we got in she started uh yelling screaming out of it Okay. Um, have you ever heard noise coming from any other apartments in the in the building? Nope. Have you ever? You've never heard. Is there? You've never heard any music coming from someone late at night? Oh, they're all in bed. Who's all in bed, sir? Everybody in the apartment. Everybody in the apartment yeah. in bed at night. You mean at yeah. night? So you yeah. must. You think I'm asking you about hearing music at night? Music? No, I don't hear any music. Okay. okay. Um, you mentioned um, that you think the colored guy's name is David. Yeah. Okay. Are you aware that his name, or is there, are you, um, are you aware of a guy named Jonathan? No. Okay. So you, okay. Um, you mentioned that uh, there are two Caucasian kids and one white kid. Yeah. Can you tell me the difference between those? The difference? Well, if two of the kids are Caucasian and one of the kids is white, what does that mean? That means that they, they're, uh, they're mixed breed, and uh, I don't know what else. Uh, which, um, just to use your words, Mr. Beers, which kids are, quote, mixed breed? Uh, the oldest boy and the oldest girl. Okay. Those are the Caucasian kids? Yeah. OK. Okay. Mm. Are there any other uh, people of color living um, in in the building? Is, is there a building? In, in your wing of the building. Yeah. Are they having trouble with them? Uh, I, I'm asking you the questions, Mr. Pierce. I appreciate you answering them for me. Um, yeah. Trying to find out what you want. That's all right. All right. Um, have, uh, uh, do you do, are any of your neighbors Caucasian or um, white or black? No, just her, just uh, the the two kids and Mr. David. David. Oh yeah. Okay. Have the kids been um, polite? Uh, have the kids ever been rude to you, Mr. Beers? No, no, no. No? Okay. Just your mother. Okay. Um, 
Thank you, sir. Your Honor, I have no further questions. All right. All right, Mr. and Mrs. Pierce, thank you for your time. I'm going to release you from this hearing. You can go on about your business. Thank you very much. Yep. You'd be good. All right, I'll do my best. Thank you. Yep. Mr. Thornton. Josie, were, was there any other witnesses from the apartment that we complex that we were expecting? Uh, no, just them two. Okay. Your Honor, I would like to uh, have Ms. Myers testify next. All right, Ms. Myers, uh, would you please raise your right hand? She has it raised, Your Honor. Yeah, but I think that's her. I left think that's hand. your left hand. Yeah. I'm so. I'm old. All right. Can you hear me now? Once you raise your right hand, you went into. Paper Am I frozen? Mode. Yes. All right. There you go. You swear or affirm any testimony you're about to give here will be true to the best of your knowledge and belief. Yes, sir. All right, thank you, Mr. Thornton. Oh, first of all, would you state your name? Ashley Agua, also known as Ashley Myers. All right, Agua is O-G-W-A? Yes, sir. M-Y-E-R-S? Yes. Thank you. Mr. Thornton? Ms. Myers, uh, what is your current legal name? Is it Myers or Agua, your last my name? Current, my current legal name is Agua. Okay. Would you prefer us to have use Ms. Myers during the hearing? Um, really, it really doesn't make, make a difference, whichever. I, most people know me as a Agua um, legally, so. Do you ever go by Ashley as your first name? Yes, sir. That is my first name, yes. That's what I go by. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, do you ever go by no. Amber? No, sir. That was a typo. Okay. Uh, how many children, uh, Ms. Myers, do you have? I have three children. And can you give us their names and ages, please? Yes. I have Josiah Rogan, age two. Jaden Agua. Stop. Could you spell that for us? Yes. Josiah, J O S I A H. Rogan, R O G A N. H 2. Mm -hmm. All right, thank you. You're welcome. I have Jaden, J A Y D E N. Agua, O G W A H 7. And Ava, A V A, Saeed, S Y E D, age nine. Thank you. You're welcome. And since you've lived in this apartment here before, uh, has there been other children that reside in that apartment? To visit? Um, sir, John has two children who come, well, they used to come um, on evenings a couple of times a week and sometimes on the weekend. And when you say John, you're referring to Jonathan. Jonathan. Is, is it pronounced Mailer? Mailer, yes. So uh, can you give us Jonathan's kids' names and ages? Yes. Christina, J U C I N A. Oh, what was her last name? Um, we, we, she goes by Justina May, so I'm not um, sure of. Oh, the spelling of the last name. Let me get it, sir. Excuse me. Okay, the last name is spelled F A Y E T T E. By Fayette, possibly Fayette. 
and and she is two and Kayden K A Y D E N Mailer M A H L E R and he is eight. When did you move into this apartment? May first of twenty twenty. And when would have uh, Jusina and Caden been, um, when would they have started visiting? Visiting, um, Jusina would have been soon after. It would have been for um, Wednesdays and Friday evenings for two hours and a partial weekend every other weekend. And um, Caden, there's no court order for visitation so it's more spaced out he doesn't come as often um basically whenever his mother allows it could be weeks or months on end that he would not be allowed to come and when is the last time you know that uh Jusina was there Justina was here last in december And what about Caden, the last time he would have been there? I believe it was um, right after New Year's of this year. He wasn't here very long. They ended up going to Jonathan's parents that night. Has all three of your children, Josiah, Jaden, and Ava, uh, lived with you in that apartment since you moved in? No, sir. When... Who, who moved into the apartment with you? Jonathan and Josiah. When did uh, Jaden and Ava move in? Jaden and Ava came back to me at the um, very end of the summer, start of the school year, uh, end of August, beginning of September. I would say the last week of August, um, school was supposed to start August 26th. So the end of August, they came back. August of 2020? Yes, sir. Did you notify management? when Jaden and Ava moved in? Josie and I had conversations of the children being here um, and we've talked about getting a two bedroom apartment as well. When, when did you have you discussions there? with, uh, did you say Josie you had discussions with? Yes. When, when did you have this? Uh, when did you first have discussions with Josie about uh, Jaden and Ava moving in? So Josie and I first had discussions about Jaden and Ava when she called Jonathan about the complaint or the allegation, I should say, of Ava and Jaden jumping off of the balcony by Mrs. Beers. When was that? I had thought it was end of August, early September. I thought they had moved in early September, but um, it has been said here today that they didn't move in until September 31st. So somewhere around that time. Did you get permission from management to have Jaden and Ava living in the apartment with you? No, sir. Did you let management know that uh, Jusina and Caden were also staying there part time when visiting and, and uh, Jonathan had uh, parenting time? Visiting? No, sir. I didn't realize that he needed to do so. 
Well, let, let me qualify visiting. When they would come during the week, and I'm talking about uh, uh, Jusina and Caden still, mm -hmm. uh, when they would come during the week, would they stay overnight? During the week? No, sir. Okay. Just the two hours on Wednesday evening and two hours on Friday evening. Okay. Did they ever stay on the weekends? Uh, longer, yes, sir. overnight on the weekends? Overnight on the weekends, yes, sir. So, and we're talking about Jusina and Caden. They could stay overnight on the yeah. weekends? Okay. Yes, sir. Did you discuss that with management and get approval for that? No, sir. I didn't know I had to get approval for them to visit on the weekends. Is there anybody else other than Jonathan and the children we've been discussing that has lived in the apartment since you moved in? No, sir. Mr. Beers talked about a David. Do you know who he was re referencing? I believe he was mistaking Jonathan's name for David, sir. Okay. Because he referred to him as the colored man. You understand that the lease you signed indicates that the number of people to occupy the property was three. Is that correct? Your Honor, that's a leading question. I'm a lot. Okay. Um, uh, yes, I knew they were to have three. Um, however, looking back um, at the lease, um, the original lease, uh, I'm sorry, Ms. Myers, we're losing your feet. Ashley, could you stop? We're losing uh, the ability to hear you. Um, I'm sorry. Am I frozen? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Go ahead, Mr. Thornton. I'm losing you. Your um, signal is showing red. Well, the problem's not at my end, it's at your end. Um, hopefully we can oh, maintain okay. this. Um, I, haven't, I haven't moved to the spot, so can you hear me now? It's yes. yellow. How many uh, bedrooms is in your apartment? One bedroom. Where does everybody sleep when it's you and all three kids? Currently, I sleep in um, my bed in the bedroom. My seven-year-old who has some emotional disabilities um, sleeps in there with me. Ava has a bed in the living room and Josiah since he's um not old enough yet he's still in the playpen in the living room do you have a pet that lives in the apartment with you yes sir and what is that pet cats okay how many cats two and when did you get the cats? Um, I got the first one in October and the second one um, came in December. October 2020 and December of 2020? Yes, sir. And they're still living in the apartment with you now? Yes, sir. Did you get permission and written authorization from the uh, Man, from the apartment complex to have those cats in the apartment? No, sir. Are there any other animals in the apartment? No, sir. 
have there ever been any other animals while you've lived there in the apartment? No, sir. You understand according to the terms of the lease you signed that uh, you were not to have animals unless you got management's uh, authorization. Yes, sir. Do you carry uh, renter's liability insurance? No, sir. Well, I did, but I don't, I don't have it anymore. You understand that's a requirement for having animals in the apartment? No, sir. I wasn't aware. I'm, I apologize. Have the police been called to your apartment um, while you've been living there? Yes, sir. How many times would you say the police have been called to the apartment? Oh, a handful. Mm. Uh, I don't know, a dozen maybe? I didn't want to take too much time. Okay, so quite a few. Yes, sir. I guess, uh, again, to, to save time, I would, I'd like to walk through uh some of these incidents uh i've got information that the police were called august 23rd of 2020 by you to the apartment by me oh to the apartment okay you remember that incident um i can't recall the exact date and circumstances but I'm sure that if we get into it, I would um, know the situation. Uh, the police report indicates uh, you were sitting in a silver Chevy Malibu. That there was... That would have been my ex-husband in the Malibu. Okay. Was he there to drop off a child? He was there um, supposed to be dropping off both of Ava and Jaden to me, but he only dropped off Ava. Uh, did you and your ex-husband get in a fight? Yes. And you remember who called the police? Was it you or him or? Him. And the police showed up on that occasion? Yes, sir. Was anyone arrested? No. I'm sorry, I didn't catch your answer. No, sir, nobody was arrested. So was it just yelling and screaming, basically? Yes, sir. Was this in the apartment or outside in the parking lot? In the parking lot. Was this during the day? Yes, sir. You recall about what time during the day? Oh, um, it, he's supposed to drop off at 6 p.m. So it was a little bit after that time. And I've got a, uh, moving on to the, the next one, uh, I've got a date of September 30th of 2020. Um, this one indicates complaining party was Jonathan Mailer. You remember that incident? I'm sure I could recall the situation. Uh, report indicates girlfriend started throwing things at uh, Jonathan. Uh, it says, girlfriend currently on the balcony, Jonathan inside the residence. Does that help you remember this incident? Yes, sir. Uh, were you and Jonathan fighting again? Yes, me and Jonathan were fighting. Screaming and yelling? Yes, sir. 
were you throwing things at him? Not at him, sir. I was very upset. Uh, he purposely put cereal on the floor when I was vacuuming. So I uh, tipped his, um, tipped his uh, PlayStation. You did what to the PlayStation? I pushed it off, attempted the TV and the uh, PlayStation, but he caught it because they're very precious to him. So you pushed them off the table they were on or what? The dresser that they sit on, yes. And what time of day was this? Oh, um, maybe afternoon or evening. Uh, next report of uh, October. Before we go on, that one in September, was anybody arrested? No, sir. Uh, the next one uh, dated October 24th, 2020. Uh, it looks like you were the complaining party. Uh, report indicates screaming and breaking stuff. Uh, it looks like you were stating it was your boyfriend. What was going on that day? Oh, let me see if I can find the document because um, I would need uh, more information to know what the situation was. It's dated 10 24 of 2020. Um, what what does it say had happened, sir? It says male in the apartment, screaming and breaking stuff, complainant, stating it's her boyfriend, kids in the apartment as well. Oh, was that the day he broke the door over my head? Um, I'm trying to find it so I can uh, pinpoint what the situation was on that day. Uh, maybe this will help, uh, CP, you were stating he's getting ready to leave wearing a green Michigan state jacket. Oh, no, that, that, that wasn't the day that the door was broke. Um, yeah, I asked him to leave when we had gotten into a fight, um, he gets angry and start to scream and things like that. And... then he he did leave before the police arrived because he knew i was calling them um and they asked me a description of what he was wearing and where he was headed so i gave them the information and the address to where his parents live was it uh just uh jonathan doing the screaming or were you screaming back at him oh i'm sure i was screaming back at him was it jonathan breaking stuff or was it also you breaking stuff on that occasion that occasion um was jonathan breaking things sir have there been occasions when you've broken stuff in the apartment yes sir well our personal belongings yes okay um moving on uh november 4th, 2020. Looks like uh, Jonathan was the complaining party. Male and female arguing, male not answering questions. Um, fighting over cereal spilled on the floor. Very, very heated. You remember that one? Uh, that was the one I had thought uh, was previous. Um, it a little mixed up um that was the time that i had told you he purposely spilled the cereal on the floor when i was in the middle of vacuuming
When was the door broken? Um, I thought I just passed it. Let me find it. It was one of the incidents when the police were called? Yes, sir. Well, who broke the door? Jonathan broke the door when I was trying to get in the door to the bedroom to retrieve Josiah, who was crying. Justina was in there also crying, but she's not my daughter, so I was attempting to get to my son at that time. And was the door hanging on a, on, was the door installed at the time it was broken or was it taken off? Yes, the door to the bedroom was installed, and when I tried to go into the bedroom to receive, retrieve Josiah, who at the time was one, um, he closed the door to keep me out, and I was trying to get in. And at that time, it literally broke in half over my head. Have other things uh, belonging to the apartment complex been broke in the apartment? Yes, sir. What? What else has been broke? Jonathan broke the heater in the bedroom by stopping on it. He was angry with the fact that his charger cord was stuck in the heater and he could not get it out. Anything else? No, sir. Have you Just broke anything? Have you the, broke anything in the, in the apartment that belongs to the uh, apartment complex. No, sir. Um, I was just going to say that the closet door John removed and put on the bedroom door uh, to replace the bedroom door because the bedroom door was broken. Okay, I'm moving on to December 18, 2020. Complaining party, Ashley Agua. Um, it does it appears you were not at the location. Um, boyfriend is threatening suicide. Looks like he was at the apartment. You remember that occasion? Yes, sir. What was happening that day? So um, we have been messaging back and forth and he explicitly told me um, he, he uses voice messages um, so he doesn't have to type everything out. And um, I was out uh, dropping, I was either dropping off of his daughter to her mother or I was at his parents or something. And um, he was angry. Was that the same night or a different night? I don't know. But anyway, I was outside the apartment and he had sent me a string of voice messages and in one of the messages he said that he um, wanted to slit his throat and die and crush everybody's windpipe around him um, throw knives at them and watch them die and um, I, I understand the anger or the upset but uh, that, that part scared me um, and for the safety of everyone involved, including John. Um, was he threatening any of the uh, neighboring tenants? Threatening, no. We're moving on to January 2nd of this year. Complaining party, uh, Ashley Agua. Uh, male subject causing problems. Uh, it looks like you asked him to leave two weeks ago. You were telling him to get off of you. You remember that? Yes, sir. What was happening that day? That day I was um, going to get my children I received a message from a um, another female 
that he had reached out to. And we have been trying to work on the relationship, and I was very upset. I came home, and I um, basically was avoiding him, and he uh, um, was wondering why I was upset. And he told him to ask her. He did. Um, I wanted to be left alone. I went to bed with Josiah in the bedroom. Um, he had uh, came here visiting. That's the day that they had to go to his parents. Um, I was in the bedroom. I asked him, could he either sleep in the living room um, so that we can have some space or could he go to his parents' house for the night or for the duration of the visit with Caden? And he said no, that this was his place, and um, it would be right to be here. Um, and Josiah and I were in the bed, and he um, put the pillow on my head. And um, since I didn't scoot over because Josiah was trying to sleep, um, he put his body on my body, and I told him to get off of me, and... He wouldn't leave, so I got up and uh, called Caden's mother to see if she could assist in him leaving, and um, it went downhill from there. Was there a lot of yelling and screaming during this incident? Yes, sir. By both of you? Yes, sir. And it sounds like there was physical altercations between both of you. Yes. We'll move on to the next one. January 14 of this year. Uh, this one says welfare check on Ashley Agua. Uh, coworker is on telephone with her now. She is hitting herself right now and screaming. What was happening that day? The 14th? Yes. Oh, I only have the one from the 15th, so I'm not sure. I have the one just from the 15th of when I was in the tub. You remember what happened on the day before the 15th? I didn't think there was something happened the day before, sir. I apologize. I don't have that one. Well, let's go to the 15th then. Caller stating that the mother of her son's child just called her was in the bathtub mentally unstable. What was what was happening that day? Yeah, so around this time, this was after Jonathan and I broke up and he left on the day we just spoke about and um, I was very overwhelmed with not only were we sick and in quarantine for two weeks, but um, also the breakup and the children. Um, I had asked my ex-husband to come, even though it wasn't his weekend or his time, um, could he come and, and take the kids? I guess I wasn't thinking because he's he's very afraid of sickness and you know I was sick but the kids they weren't so bad off as I was um, and so he he wouldn't come and get them because of being sick I was I was very overwhelmed with everything I had called um, my son's grandma on his dad's side. So let her know that I was feeling very overwhelmed and hopeless at the time and i'm, I'm gonna stop me. you ashley i want to ask though was this an incident where there was yelling and screaming in the apartment no sir at this time john had vacated the apartment for a few weeks uh, well that's the last time he was here was not this time but the time before that we just spoke about on i believe it was the second is there yelling and screaming on not just on this incident, but uh, since Jonathan has left, has there been yelling and screaming between you and your children? 
Yes, sir. My son has ADHD and ODD severe. How often would you say that happens? Oh, my son, um, <laughs> not only daily, but um, with with Jaden, um, it, it could be at any time with an outburst. Is it your testimony? It's just him doing the screaming or do you scream back at your kids? No, it's not just him doing the screaming. Um, him and my daughter fight and then, yes, sometimes I do. I need to break it up. Uh, sometimes he's, not sometimes, a lot of the times he's very physical with the other children. Is it fair to say, Ms. Myers, that the incidents we just went through are the ones that the police were called, but is it fair to say that uh, there have been other incidents when the, there were disturbances in your apartment when the police were not called? Your Honor, this calls for speculation. Well, I think she can answer the question. Okay. Um, sure, maybe a few. I provided you with some uh, photos. I realize, Your Honor, they have not been entered into evidence yet. Um, but uh, did you get those photos, Ms. Myers? Yes, sir. You recognize those photos as photos of your apartment? At the time they were taken, yes, sir. Do you acknowledge that the apartment was uh, really in terrible condition at that point? Your Honor, I kind of object to the phrasing of that question too. Yeah, perhaps you'd be more diplomatic. I'm not sure what the... How, how would you describe, Ms. Myers, the uh, condition of the apartment shown in those pictures? Um, best. Is that typical of what your apartment looks like? No, sir. Is it your testimony that this was a unique circumstance? Yes, sir. Why was it a unique circumstance? It was a unique circumstance because, you know, as I had previously stated, a lot was going on in the, in the month of January. Um, in the beginning of January, as we know, on the 2nd, the fight between Jonathan and I and his last removal from the apartment, that's the baby I'm gonna have to get up and get him out of bed um, for his nap. But um, not only that, but, uh, probably the week later, we were quarantined for two weeks. Um, I don't have transportation right now, so well, and I, I believe that I'm responsible for my own health and I'd be okay, but um, I am pretty sure that I had, because I quarantined our, ourselves for two weeks, um, we had people from the church bring groceries and diapers and things. Uh, that sort, I was very tired. I didn't have my sense of smell, um, things like that. Um, and also with the eviction notice, being brought in January on the 12th and going back and forth with Josie, trying to get some type of handle on the apartment at the same time, um, trying to figure out where, uh, where are we going to go and take care of myself and the kids, um, pack, clean, um, break up my children here greatest. My son has been ODD and I struggle with um, severe depression and anxiety. Um, in addition to uh, trying to get ready for the inspection on the 27th of January, the same day that I was to leave to go to a business conference in Chattanooga, Tennessee. So do you know when these pictures were taken? Sometime in January, sir. 
So there was an inspection scheduled? I believe it was on the 27th, yes. And these pictures were... Uh, So I, I guess strike that. Uh, so you knew that the management wanted to come and inspect the apartment at that time. Is that correct? Your Honor, I, I'm having trouble Sir. hearing. As am are we all. Uh, Ms. Myers, we're struggling with your feed there. Um, Can you hear me now? Yes. The question was, Ms. Myers, did you understand at the time that the uh, apartment complex and management w was wanting in to inspect the apartment? Management, yes, sir. Uh, they had contacted you to make arrangements to inspect the apartment? Yes, sir. And were you there when they inspected and took these pictures? On the 27th, no, sir. I had left already to um, catch a carpool for Chattanooga. But you knew that they were going to enter and inspect the apartment? Yes, sir. <coughs> you, um, you currently have income, Ms. Myers? Objection. Relevance. Mr. Thornton? If she can't pay the rent, she that, cannot abide by the lease. That wasn't pled in the complaint, and that's not part of the termination action. Fair enough. I'll sustain it. The uh, Mr. and Mrs. Beers, you heard their testimony earlier. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, what happened uh, here recently with, did you get into a shouting match with Mr. and Mrs. Beers? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What caused that? So, Ashley, we're, I know you're struggling there. We've seen this circumstance before when a witness is trying to live their life while they're testifying in a court proceeding, but that's interfering with our ability to hear. Um, and I can see that you're struggling. All right, try again. At times we've had an excellent signal. Right now, let's see if we can get back to that. Okay. Can you, so, uh, something uh, has changed, uh, like you've got, uh, something has changed like you've got something covering the microphone. I'm holding it on the sides. Can you hear me now? Sort of. Before we lose you, what's your telephone number? 269. Three, six, four, eighty-five. Your Honor, I can email it to the court. If that All right. Helpful. I'm thinking we may. She's about out of power. Would you please do that for me? Yep. Out of power. Am I still frozen? No, but we've got. We can't hear you. Uh, Okay. Um, he, he was napping, but he's awake now. Okay, so let's go outside to try that. Okay, come on. You might be a little cold, but it's all right. Let's go. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Sort of. Not yeah. well. That's really strange. Um, can you hear me now? Everything's turned up. Let's see how it goes. Well, maybe you have it turned up too far. Maybe that's why it's distorting. No, I just uh, turned it up. Uh, can you hear me now? Turn it down a little bit. Okay. That seems better. All right. All right, Mr. Thornton. 
Uh, have there been other occasions other than January 27th when management wanted to inspect your apartment? I believe on January 12th, yes. January 12th, can you hear me? Not very well. Ms. Myers, I'm, I'm waiting not for sure the change. I'm sorry. Um, I don't know. Just a minute, please. You are definitely struggling with the children there. Uh, just the uh, one. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right, Mr. Thornton. Uh, the question, Ms. Myers, was: uh, Have there been other occasions other than January 27th when management requested to inspect your apartment? January 12th, sir. Yes. January 12th of this year. Yes. And did you allow them to inspect? They can come in if they like. But at the time, did you allow them to come in and inspect? I didn't prevent them. Did you authorize them to come in? Authorize? I didn't think they needed my authorization. I guess we're playing with words here. Did they ask to enter your apartment? Yes, sir. Did you let them enter your apartment? When they came to the door, they could have opened it. I have, I'm sorry, I'm struggling to answer the question. Um, I told them I was sick. I said they were coming anyway. Do you want something to eat? I want a snack. So, your Honor, can we take a short recess, perhaps? Or... Yeah. I to interrupt Mr. Thornton's direct, but uh, how much more do you have, Lance? Not much, Your Honor. All right, well, we'll come to the conclusion and then we'll take a recess. Okay. Other than the January 12th, Miss Myers, was there any others? January 12th, January 27th, any other occasions they've asked to come in and inspect? Um, they insinuated that I had a city inspection on March 10th. But nothing Excuse came of that? You, I apologize. I'm sorry? Did anything come of the March 10th inspection? Um, I, believe, I believe they, um, they, the management did, yes. That's all I have for Ms. Uh, Myers, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Myers, uh, I'm going to put you in the waiting room, and uh, we'll come okay. back in 10 minutes. All right, thank you. All right, I'm just going to stop the record, but I'm going to leave the live feed on, so bear in mind that their live feed is on. Uh, we'll come back at uh, 345. Thank you, Your Honor.
Well, he. Okay, Sounds like an older gentleman. He's 99. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> he might be 98. <laughs> um, he's a very nice man. He sounds very nice. But he and my wife belong to the same Catholic charity, ah. so she gets tons of this stuff. Yeah, you did mention, and your priest. I don't think they brought me that email with that phone number. I don't know what I did there. <laughs> Welcome back, Ash. I think we all need a little break there. We're back on the record. We're still live on YouTube, and we are uh, still on the Zoom platform. Uh, Mr. Thornton finished with his questions that he had for you. Uh, your lawyer, Ms. Bauer, now has some questions for you. Ms. Bauer? Thank you, Your Honor. Let's uh, address the um, elephant in the room here first. Well, whatever, anyway. Um, did you attempt to get child care today? Yes. And were you able to get, uh, or which, which of your children is with you today? Josiah. And is, Joe, did you ask, or is, does Josiah have a father in his life? He has a father, um, but it's complicated. And is Josiah's, did you ask, did you try to get someone to help you with Josiah today? Um, so all of them are supposed to go to my friends where the other two are right now, but um they they all woke up at four o'clock this morning so josiah at the time she came at 1 30 to pick them up was uh deep into his nap and i um thought it should be okay for him to continue okay um what is you've mentioned you mentioned in your testimony to mr thornton what is ODD. What is ODD? ODD is oppositional defiance disorder. And you mentioned that one of your children has ODD. Yes, Jaden has 
um, ADHD and severe ODD. Has a medical provider ever informed you that Jaden it has been diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. Yes, ma'am. Was there, okay. Um, I wasn't sure if Mr. Thornton was saying something. Okay. Um, what uh, is it like, or what, uh, tell us about oppositional defiant, your experience with oppositional defiance disorder. experience with oppositional defiance disorder started around um, late two years, um, early three years old uh, with Jaden when he was expelled from daycare. Um, and it's, it's been very overwhelming. Um, I feel like I finally have um, some supports in place um, here uh, with um, his therapist and case management from community mental health, as well as my mentor from Hope United, but um, it's taken us at that point. Um, so this is bad, very, uh, overwhelming. very important testimony and your bandwidth is so poor um, that we're getting like every third word. At some points it's great and then at another point you fade into <laughs> Uh, the great beyond. I haven't moved. I'm not sure what. Uh, it's not you. It has to do with the signal at your building. Or, uh, Ms. Agua, do you have a lot of applications open on your phone? It may help if you close some of them. Applications? Yeah, sometimes if there's a lot running. Um, I've removed. Okay, I've removed uh, the other that, have, that were open. Is that better? Yes. Okay, I apologize. Not the greatest service, I'm sorry. That's much better. I'm not sure what you closed, but that helped. Okay. Thank you. So I had, or may I proceed, Your Honor? Yes. Okay. So I had asked you about your experience with oppositional defiance disorder. Um, and you were just starting to tell us about that. Okay, so I can start over. Um, it started when Jaden was about two or three years old and he was expelled from his daycare um, for outbursts and aggressive violent behavior. When we lived in Kalamazoo, so we went to um, WMU School of Medicine because I, I just knew that something was, was not, I didn't struggle like, excuse Let me. Let stop you for a minute. There's no objection stop. here, but how is this relevant? Uh, the noise that is alleged to be coming part of the, the cause of the problems are the result of her son's di diagnosed disability he's not on the lease and he's not even supposed to be there uh, pursuant to the lease um, it certainly helps explain some of what uh, they're hearing um, but like I said, they didn't object. I just wonder where you were going here. Your Honor, if I if I could, uh, it's not it's not Jaden that's breaking doors and screaming at their partners and causing the police to be called and calling the police. So I agree. It's it's if it's relevant. It it it's not the. Jaden is not the cause of the problem that we're trying to evict Ms. Myers for. But Your Honor, there's been testimony about noises and the allegations from other tenants about what's happening in the unit. Um, All right, well, it explains why it's happening, or at least some of it, but where does that get us? To an ADA defense, or I'm not sure where you're headed. Uh, it's certainly a defense that I had considered, yes. Um, but uh, I was going to address the occupants and the number of occupants in the unit also. Um, but it also, um, well, I mean, I guess I, 
I, I it would be an incomplete picture for the court if the court didn't know about what was going on and, and what Ms. Meyer's experience is like, Ms. Iowa's experience is like with her child and, and trying to raise her family while having, I mean, we've got a quiet covenant enjoyment defense that runs both directions here, I think. And you've got a mother who's trying to keep her family together and, and functional and keep her children safe to the best that she can and who's being, who's having apparently allegations at least of um, having neighbors that are harassing her um, or certainly involved in the situations that are happening and uh, the children are part of the law enforcement interactions it seems um, but it's uh, maybe uh, it seems like a double well, standard put it this way you're going to, we don't have very much time left unless we go till 10 o'clock tonight. It's 10 minutes, and I do appreciate the fact you got squeezed because the direct was so long, but um, I often have an incomplete picture of things because I don't get to hear relevant or evidence that's not relevant or admissible. Um, and I'm not saying this isn't either of those things, but. Um, I'm not sure where you're headed, and I don't want to stay here until 10 o'clock, but we may. All right, go I ahead. The, I don't know if Mr. If it appears as though Mr. Thornton has additional witnesses since he's got two other parties here. I don't know if that's true or not, um, but so I don't know how how long we have until for the rest of his witnesses either, I guess. but. Um, um, All right, well, go ahead. I, I raised it. He didn't make an objection, and then he did. Um, a couple of issues. One, this child isn't on the lease. Two, um, he's not alleging that the acts of the child are specific lease violations. The neighbors testified about it, but um, there's plenty of other stuff. So I'm just burning daylight here also. So go ahead. I guess, like, <clears throat> paragraph three of the attachment to the complaint, Landlord has received numerous complaints from other residents within the complex complaining about excessive noise. Okay. Uh, I guess it's like, uh, or I was going to ask Ms. Myers about uh, the interactions between her children. Be again, because Mr. Thornton elicited some testimony about that already, actually. Um, but so again, I guess I'm <coughs> burning daylight in exchange. So I'll just proceed um, and, and move on. We have a lot of things to cover. So. Um, Let's uh, let's go to that very next uh, point, um, Ms. My, uh, Ms. Ms. Agua. At what point um, in time did your ex-husband's two children move in with you? About the end of August. And what caught, what was that expected? No. And why did it? Well, when the pandemic um, shut everything down, I was in Kalamazoo and lost my school and childcare for the kids. I had to resi resign from my job and move to my mother's in St. Joe. Um, when that didn't work out, I moved here with Jonathan and um, the two older children went to stay with their dad while he was working from home. Um, I didn't expect the pandemic to last um, longer than a month but it has more than a year and uh, he needed to go back to work. If the children did not come to stay with you, where would they have anywhere, uh, would they have had anywhere else to go? No. Could they stay with their father? No, he stayed with me and could not afford the child care. Hmm. Could you afford the child care? No. Um, okay. The, uh, 
Mr. Mr. Thornton elicited some testimony about your interactions with your ex with your ex husband. What were you when when your ex husband called the police? What were you experiencing? I was experiencing um, some frustration because um, my children's. I need you to be quiet. I experienced some frustration due to the fact that my children's birthday party was coming up and he was supposed to return um, Jaden to me um, and he did not. Um, his birthday was coming up that weekend and um, I have physical custody of the children. So by that point, he was in violation of that. So were you afraid you were that he was taking your child from you? Yes. Okay. And it hasn't been the first time. So um, are you aware of any other times that law enforcement has been called on you by someone who does not reside in your community? No. Well, besides my ex-husband. Right, other than this one incident. So so it's safe to say that all of the all of the police activity in the unit has been the result of your you or Jonathan calling the police. Yes. Okay. So I'm uh I'm gonna pull up the crime addendum that uh, you are alleged of um, breaching the crime free lease addendum. Uh, Your Honor, um, that is that was filed and attached to the complaint, so I'm not introducing it as an exhibit. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the uh, crime free lease addendum says that. Uh, resident or any members of the resident's household shall not engage in any criminal activity, including drug-related criminal activity, which means the illegal manufacture, sale, distribution, or use of a controlled substance or the possession with intent to manufacture, sell, distribute, or use of a controlled substance. Have you ever manufactured, sold, or distributed a controlled substance? No. Has law enforcement ever been called to your property, uh, to your knowledge, for the for anything related to controlled substances? No. Okay. Um, the continuing with the crime free lease addendum, um, paragraph two again references um, drug related criminal activity. So, uh, has law enforcement ever been called to your property? for drug-related criminal activity that is not the manufacture, sale, or distribution of a controlled substance. No. Uh, okay. Uh, there's another paragraph in the lease. I think number three is sufficiently redundant. I won't waste the court's time with it. Uh, uh, similar with number four, but uh, how about what, um, prostitution? What paragraph, what paragraph are you in? Um, I was, I started with one and I went to number two and I was uh, just number three of the crime free lease addendum, your honor. What to it. All right, there you go. All right, thank you. Yep, which uh, is one, two, three, paragraph or bullet point number four of the attachment to the uh, uh, complaint as one of the, 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 one of the complaints allegations that they violated the crime free lease addendum. Um, so, um, again, number four revolves around controlled substances, but number five says that um, a resident or any member of the resident's household, any guest or other person under the resident's control shall not engage in any illegal activity, including prostitution. Uh, Ms. Ms. Agua, has um, prostitution, have you ever been uh, uh, accused of having prostitution happen at your apartment? Um, or have you ever had law enforcement called with regards to prostitution? No. Okay. Um, how about criminal gang activity? No. 
Other than the domestic violence disputes that Mr. Thornton elicited earlier in this testimony um, that involve threats against you or Mr. Mailer, uh, has there been any assaultive or threatening police reports uh, involving your, your apartment and any other apartment or unit in, uh, or involving you and any other unit in the building? Uh, has there been any threats? Uh, assaultive or threatening or intimidating behavior. Like, have you ever assaulted or threatened or intimidated your neighbors? I do believe it's possible you're frozen or you're on mute. Oh, you actually need dropped her. Ms. Myers, can you hear me? Connected. Yeah. Um, because stop, I asked it. Stop, stop. This here has become a farce. Uh, the child's yelling, she's wiggling around, we can't hear her. Oh, he's, um, he's old. Her crying. signal is terrible. And if this were in a courtroom, it wouldn't be as undignified as this. It's going to make a very difficult record. There are hundreds of people watching this. This proceeding's got very little dignity. Um, and it, it points out two things, why they want to evict her and why you believe she's a normal mother. But I'm not going to continue to proceed like this. We're going to have to reschedule or continue this. Ms. Brown, I can put you in the waiting room. I can see your disdain and so can everybody else. She does have a right to representation in this matter. She has a right to receive a defense. I'm going to put you in the waiting room and you can bring us in there. Um, all right, we got to find a place to put this. I'm not doing an embarrassing, disorganized proceeding like this. Uh, Ms. Myers, unmute your microphone if you would. Oh, okay. This is a court proceeding. This isn't something you try to fit in around everything else in your life, which is part of why your life is so disorganized. Now, we're going to do this at a time when you won't have any distractions and we'll have a legitimate uh, feed. If you have to, I'll have you come here to the courthouse. You can sit in the conference room where we'll have a good signal and you won't have the distractions we have. This is extremely distracting and very unprofessional. Uh, record and I'm, I'm not going to continue like this. So let's figure out where we can continue this too. Uh, I have another enjoyable full afternoon for March 24th and another termination of tenancy trial. So that's available. Which is why I was reluctant to adjourn this, why I didn't go to the funeral. Um,
Landlord tenant takes a lot more time than it used to because every hearing now takes two hearings, as you well know, Mr. Thorne. And then we have a lot of these termination of tenancy hearings, which take time. I have another very full one set for the next Wednesday, which is where I'd hope to put this. Your Honor, what is, or never mind, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, if, go ahead. If, I, if I'm on that case, but I think it, uh, that is not the case I'm thinking of. Though. It's Village Manor. Let's take a look. I think maybe Mr. Welch is on it. Um, I, I apologize for interrupting. Yeah, it's the Giddens matter, and uh, Mr. Welch is on it. I expect that's going to be almost as enjoyable as this was. Um, At least I'm better looking, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he would. I don't think he would even dispute that point. Uh, Literally every day is filled. I have another termination. What's this? Every day is filled from bottom to top. And I have another two hour hearing on March 29th for my more tenant. All right, I think we can do this Thursday, April 1st at 9 a.m. Um, does that work for you, Mr. Thornton? I'm checking. Yes, it does, Your Honor. Ms. Bauer? Yes, sir. Ms. Myers, does that work for you? Yes, sir. Un unmute your microphone, if you would. Sorry. Well. I just want to say, I'm not mad at you, but we can't do a hearing like this. I understand that you're struggling in more ways than one, but um, when we do this the next time, if you need to, you can come directly to the court and I will you. set it up here, but we, or you can go to legal aid and broadcast from there, but we can't do this. Um, what's happening today, no, we just lost her. So it just points out how frustratingly difficult this is. All right, April 1st at 9 a.m. We will continue with examination of the defendant without a daycare uh, necessity. Mr. Thorne, I understand your client's quite frustrated with the continuation here and the uh, circumstances. But the defendant is entitled to a defense, and uh, she's getting one. Um, I, I understand, Your Honor, and I understand the court's predicament, and I agree with uh, the assessment of today's hearing. But for the record, I, I do have to uh, object to the continuance on the basis that uh, it, it, it really is coming from Ms. Myers uh, that we have to to continue this again and, uh, it just does work to her advantage uh, to stay in this apartment and uh, so with that I'll just put 
the uh, I do understand the courts uh, and why the court understand didn't. your objection. It's the defendant's disruption that caused the need for the continuance, exactly. but it's not malicious disruption. It just is. Um, all right, well, we'll try this again. Get a good night's sleep. We're going to need it. I'll see you all on April 1st at 9 a.m. I'll block out my calendar. I'll have arraignments that morning, and I'll try to finish them before 9 o'clock. Yeah. But literally, each day is filled with court business. So we'll fill it with a little more. We'll do this on April 1st. All right, you're all free to go. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Well, some days are harder than others. This is true. All right, thank you for your help.